be to be released this year. She's also one of MTV's most wanted artists, and we thought that the only way we could really do her justice was to play a rockumentary in the spotlight slot. So here we go with the spotlight on Madonna. <laughs> She's fabulous. She's excellent. She's gorgeous. It's all right. I think she's outraged. She's really awesome. She's cool. I love her. She's the best. <laughs> Yo, she is bad. I decided to name my daughter after her. She's a great star and she's a great singer and I love her. Marilyn Monroe, look out because she is Madonna. My first plane ride, my first cab ride, and I didn't know where I was going, I didn't know it at all, and I asked the taxi cab driver to drop me off in the middle of everything. So he dropped me off in Times Square. Anyway, I was completely awestruck, and ten years later, I'm standing in the middle of Times Square looking at all the people. I don't think that I'm using sex to sell myself. What does boy toy mean to you? What do you think it means? Oh, I'm a Midwestern girl in a bustier. I'm not a practicing Catholic. You converted me. I know what it is to be bad. I've been bad. It's the way I am. It's the way I've always been. I am me, a person, and not just something. I am a movie star. If everyone underestimates you, you keep giving them little surprises. I want to conquer the world. Through her trend-setting music, dancing, videos, fashions, movies, Broadway appearances, involvement with charitable causes, and a much-publicized marriage to Sean Penn, Madonna has been in the public eye continuously since 1983. But the most often asked question is, just who is that girl? At first, no one really knew the material girl. But now, Madonna herself has offered a glimpse behind the glitz with the introspective work of her Like a Prayer album, as poignantly illustrated in O oh Father. A lot of stuff in the story is drawn from my life. I grew up in Michigan. I come from a really big family, and I went to Catholic schools most of my education life. Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone was born August 16, 1958, in Rochester, Michigan. When Madonna was six, her mother died of cancer, leaving Madonna's father, Silvio, to raise and care for a family of six. Two important aspects of their upbringing were religion and music. Everyone in the family um, studied a musical instrument. My father was really big on that. Somehow, I only took about a year and a half of piano lessons, and I convinced my father to let me take dancing lessons instead. Bye. But there was always music in our house, either practicing or records or the radio or someone singing in the bathtub or noise. My nickname in, in, in my family was The Mouth. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse me, I'm going to say something. I love you too, shut up for a second. Spotlight is on me now. Shut up for a second. When you're from a big family, everybody's really competitive with each other. So aside from just screaming really loud and doing things that got me attention, like, oh, oh, you know, we would all get in various kinds of trouble to get my father's attention and then um, be punished accordingly. Strict family? Well, just ask me if I could do one thing and I'll probably say no. Oh, you come to me and I'll play your father. <gasps> okay. And you come in and say something. Um, okay, Dad, um... <laughs> I want to know if I can go to the movies with my friend this Friday. What's his name? <laughs> no, just say... It doesn't even go. Get the board. Just say no. No, can't go. <laughs> I think that his strictness 
taught me a certain amount of discipline that has helped me in my life and in my career and also um, made me work harder for things. I wouldn't have turned out the way I was if I didn't have all those old-fashioned values to rebel against, so. Yeah. <laughs> After high school, Madonna spent a semester at the University of Michigan on a performance scholarship. But her rebellious nature led her eastward to New York City. I went to New York. I had a dream. I wanted to be a big star. I didn't know anybody. I wanted to dance. I wanted to sing. I wanted to make people happy. I wanted to be famous. I worked really hard and my dream came true. Actually, it wasn't quite that simple. Madonna spent three years in the Big Apple, basically living hand to mouth, working odd jobs, studying as a member of the prestigious Pearl Lang and Alvin Ailey dance companies, and making herself known in the trendy downtown clubs. When I first came to New York, I was a dancer, and a French record label offered me um, a recording contract, and I had to go to Paris to do it. So I went there, and that's how I really got in the music business, but I didn't like what I was doing when I got there, so I left, and I never did a record there. When she returned to the States, she played drums in clubs on the Lower East Side with a group called The Breakfast Club. So then I'm playing drums, and, and we're getting gigs in certain downtown clubs like CBGB's and the Mud Club and, uh, and Max's Kansas City and everything. And I'm starting to write music for the band, too, like some songs, but they already had two singers in the band, so they would never let me get up and sing a song, because what's the point? One day, I finally convinced them, I'll just play, and play guitar and sing one song, please, 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 and they, they finally said okay. So then um, I got up to sing one song, and the other guy went back to play the drums, and like I got a standing ovation. I befriended one DJ in particular, and he worked at a club called Danceteria, which was one of my favorite clubs. I mean, I was carrying his tape around with me everywhere to every club, waiting for the moment to pop it on somebody. So I said, would you play it? I said, would you play it? And he said, well, I can't play it in the middle of the night. I mean, I haven't heard it. What if it's terrible? What if everybody stops dancing? And I said, all right, well, you listen to it, take it home with you tonight and listen to it, and I'll come back here tomorrow. Needless to say, the DJ liked what he heard. So did the crowd at Danceteria, and so did executives at Sire Records, who signed Madonna and released everybody as a single. It quickly became a dance club hit. Burning Up was the follow-up single, and its success prompted the release of an album in the summer of 1983, titled simply Madonna. At the age of 25, only six months into her recording career, with a hit album and her first pop hit holiday climbing the charts, Madonna had revitalized the dance music scene. Well, to start off with, a lot of people thought that I was um, a black artist before they saw my videos because a lot of my music is more R&B oriented. Next, Madonna moved on to the challenging task of producing her first videos. Madonna Mania was right around the corner. I had had a couple of singles out before anybody really knew who I was because I didn't have a video. And the first video I ever did was to Borderline, which was by then my like third or fourth single. So my album was doing fairly well without anybody being really aware of what my image was at all. And so I did my first video to Borderline and then suddenly I had that crossover that I had been waiting for for so long because people could see who I was, they could put a face together with a song. As 1984 opened, the Madonna album remained at the top of the charts, producing even more hit singles. By summer, Madonna had begun work on her anxiously awaited second album. I just finished uh, recording an album with Mile Rogers, and I helped put it out in October, but they're still playing stuff off my last album, which I can't complain, but I'm really anxious to get the new stuff out. And the title of the new album? Like a Virgin. <laughs> uh, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> no comment from the peanut gallery. Madonna's very first performance of Like a Virgin on the 1984 MTV Video Music Awards cinched her status as pop superstar. The album debuted in November, and by Christmas, sales were going through the roof.
but she's fantastic. I knew she'd be a star. She could be. She could be great. She could be a major star. She is a star, George. The biggest star in the universe right now as we speak. Okay, here we go. And we're rolling. Ready? And action. I was really excited about it because, to me, it was like making little movies, and I've always been excited about that. So it was, it was like confining it to the three minutes of length of a song. For movie fan Madonna, the prospect of making those little movies was a dream come true. And she lost no time making the transition from small screen to large. My part in the movie is actually someone like myself, a singer in a club. So all my action takes place in a club, singing and dealing with the audience. Vision Quest spawned the number one single, Crazy For You and was followed by another film, which increased Madonna's exposure even further. The movie I'm working on is called Desperately Seeking Susan. It's directed by Susan Seidelman, who did a movie called Smithereens. And um, I play Susan. Although Madonna was originally just a supporting player, the timing of the release of the film gave her a star billing. I've seen them together. You saw Roberta with another man? Who? Looks like a real grease ball to me. Acting is just, it's another, it's, it's just another kind of performing. It's, um, it's an expression, it's being honest with your audience, stuff like that. So to me, it's just an extension of what I do already making videos and performing on stage. With two movies, two albums, and four top ten records to her credit, in the spring of 1985, Madonna launched the Like a Virgin Tour. 38 performances in 27 U.S. cities sold out to 355,000 screaming fans. New York's Radio City Music Hall sold out in 34 minutes. The Material Girl was big business, and she had a look all her own. Are, are you the designer of your look, your hairstyle, the clothing? Oh, yeah. Do you think someone else could come up with this? <laughs> but she wasn't unique for long. So-called Madonna wannabes were born, all wanting to emulate their idol. When you wear Madonna, everybody looks at you, right? Everybody just, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah, just yeah, look at that girl. It's the only one that we can look up to nowadays. You can wear all this in the street nowadays. It's fun. It, it helps you to be yourself, you know? I say it's more myself, like, I, this is the way I am. Madonna Land opened at Macy's in New York, selling such items as skirts, shirts, gloves, jewelry, and posters. But Madonna was one step ahead of the copycats. She changed her look, the first of many changes which would become her trademark. And there was something new on the horizon. Madonna was in love. The media went crazy over the romance between Madonna and actor Sean Penn, star of films such as Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Bad Boys. The two were inseparable. Madonna composed Live to Tell for Sean's film At Close Range. And then there were the pictures. In her early New York days, Madonna had done some modeling to make ends meet. Now that she was a superstar, some of her nudes surfaced just where you'd expect them to. But just three days after publication of the photos, Madonna responded to the controversy in her own unique fashion. I'm sympathizing with you by keeping my coat on, okay? So don't feel bad. In August, Sean and Madonna were married in what was to be a private ceremony. But once again, the press was there, this time in helicopters. And once again, Madonna had something to say. Sean and I took out this full-page ad in the LA Times. <laughs> Apparently nobody saw it because we were expecting 20,000 people and only 28 showed up. There I am, the blushing bride, and here's my family. That's my uh, Uncle Guido, my cousin Giuseppe, that's Grandma Ciccone, that's Aunt Jean and Uncle Nick. That's Sean's family. It was really beautiful, and I think that everybody had a great time. Until the press got there. We tried to ignore them, 
but as you can see, they were very close. We tried to save the cake, but no such luck. But I couldn't ignore the helicopters any longer. The duo teamed up to do a feature, Shanghai Surprise. What made you decide to stay? I never got your first name. Gloria. The film's lackluster box office performance was more than made up for by the overwhelming success of Madonna's next album, True Blue. The differences between the new album and Madonna's two previous LPs were apparent. Clearly her range had broadened, her work matured. The new songs were thought-provoking and what had become her other trademark, controversial. Papa Don't Preach, dealing with the sensitive topics of teenage pregnancy and abortion, touched off a storm of protest, debates over the meaning of the song, and parody. You're in trouble, but I don't preach. I have to listen to um, the criticism that I get when it's when they're dealing with my with my work, and uh, it's beneficial. Despite the controversy, by May of 1987, True Blue was the number one album in 28 countries, an unprecedented achievement. The album spawned four top ten hits, including three number one singles. In May of 1987, Madonna delivered a one, two, three punch with the simultaneous release of the movie, album, and world tour of Who's That Girl? By now, the center of a media hurricane, Madonna really had conquered the world. The year ended with the release of the You Can Dance album, a compilation of new dance mixes of Madonna's previous hits. In 1988, Madonna took a break from music to concentrate on her acting, making her stage debut on Broadway in David Mamet's Speed the Plow. I know what it is to be lost. I know you're lost. While critics seemed to like the play, they gave mixed reviews to Madonna, who had her own words to describe the experience. It felt like really good sex. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, career separations and constant pressures from the media took their toll on the marriage. Amid a flurry of conflicting reports, Madonna filed for divorce in January of 1989. Just two months later, Madonna was embroiled in yet another controversy. This one over the video produced for her song, Like a Prayer. Definitely too much of a big deal is being made about it. That if I heard about, my God, it's, she's, it's blasphemous. If we believe the freedom of speech and expression, let it just go. I mean, everybody expresses things differently. No, I'm not like personally morally offended. It's just that it's a little extreme. It's just a lot of hype. For Christians, there are things that are much more important. I mean, I hope that people don't get up in arms about this when people are hungry, people are homeless. But to some, Like a Prayer was a big deal. The Pepsi-Cola company had signed Madonna to an unprecedented multi-million dollar contract, including a full tour and worldwide ad campaign to premiere the video. But Madonna's use of religious symbols and racial overtones made the whole thing too hot to handle. They just said they didn't like it. And uh, a couple of people were threatening to um, boycott the bottling companies in the South. Well, I think they were really afraid that this whole thing was gonna like blow up and they didn't want to do anything to harm Pepsi. I think that the video has a very positive message. It was about um, overcoming racism and overcoming the fear of, of, of telling the truth, of getting, you know, so many people witness crimes in there. They're afraid to get involved. I believe in God. I believe that everything you do comes back to you. I think I believe in the innate goodness of people and the importance of that. To that end, Madonna puts in a full schedule, offering her time supporting causes she feels are worthy. But there's one thing that we're all born with. 
and that is freedom. We are all free citizens. Every hour, one to six animal species is destroyed, gone forever. At this rate, the entire rainforest will be gone in 50 years, forever. I don't think any of us want people years from now looking back at the 1980s, wondering why we didn't do more to help children in America who are homeless or abused. There's a lot of terrible things happening in the world today and there's a lot of people that need our help and there's a lot of environmental issues that need to be dealt with. But um, in terms of, you know, AIDS, I've just, I've just known so many people that have died of AIDS and it's such a serious problem. You know, AIDS is a powerful and mysterious disease that continues to elude us, but we are more powerful because we can stop it from spreading any further by educating ourselves and finding out the facts. Entering the 90s, Madonna joined Warren Beatty for the big screen version of Dick Tracy. Aren't you gonna frisk me? This movie looks like nothing anyone's ever seen. I was beginning to wonder what a girl had to do to get arrested. Madonna's off-screen relationship with Beatty has been grist for the gossip mill. Are you gonna make a move? Do I have to do everything? I'm on duty. But just what is going on? Well, I just really can't comment on that. Dick Tracy inspired Madonna's album, I'm Breathless. Some of the songs are in the movie, the rest are just inspired by the movie itself, the period aspect, the cartoon aspect, the gangsters, you know, the characters, and, and who I was in the movie. One early release from the album helped revive interest in the short-lived dance craze, Voguing. I think it has a lot of humor to it too. I mean, it's just so sort of arrogant and there and presentational, you know what I mean? Self-conscious in a way. And I think it's hilarious. Ready, 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 ready. Move, baby. Move, and on top of everything else, there's Madonna's 1990 world tour, entitled appropriately enough, Blonde Ambition. Perhaps Madonna has conquered the world. What else could she possibly want? I want more! Don't go far, baby. Have I found love again? Yes, many times. I'm the loser in the family. Now that I'm successful, I have a million more things to worry about. If I do something, and everybody, and there's 100 people in the room and 99 people say they liked it. I only remember the one person who didn't like it. And they compare you to Marilyn Monroe, okay? Yeah, but that's just because we have the same hair color. I know the moral majority is up in arms against me. I think that people who really understand what I'm doing are offended by it. I flirt with everybody, though. I mean, I flirt with grandmothers and garbage men and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> My father doesn't call me and say, hey, I just saw your video on MTV. I mean, he never does that. He just kind of tries to treat me like all my brothers and sisters. Madonna, I think it's time we get going here. Get going where, Dad? We gotta go. We got some homework to do and things to do. Dad, I graduated from high school. <laughs> Hi, I'm Madonna. <laughs>